Welcome to Talking Heads on USA Global TV, starring the one and only wonderful Dr. Jacqueline. It's a prestigious place where world-class influencers and experts meet, and where you'll find the most trusted advisors and coaches for all things in life and business. Visit usaglobaltv.com to sign up for our newsletter, get the value you need, and be first in line to learn about events and giveaways and other valuable content. Connect with us. Email Dr. Jacqueline at usaglobaltv.com to talk about how you can become part of USA Global TV. That's USA Global TV, where the doctor is always in. Hello, everyone, and welcome to USA Global TV. And hello to our friends listening on Business Talk Radio out of New York. I am Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, and our show today is the United Kitchens. And joining me is our celebrity chef and certified nutritionist and so much more, Ricky McKenna. Hi, Ricky. Hi, Dr. Jacqueline. How are you? I'm well, thanks. How are you in that beautiful kitchen? I am well, thank you. And just about prepared, and I have a fingers full of goat cheese, so <laughs> which we'll get to in a little while. I uh, love goat cheese. I, I do too. <laughs> so, Ricky, for people who are joining us for the first time, I'm going to spotlight you. And if you can share uh, information about your background, which is very diverse and, and uh, very extensive, but just give people an overview of why food is important to you and why you want to have fun when you're cooking and fun in the kitchen. Oh, thank you. Well, I am Ricky McKenna. I'm a certified nutritionist for 20, almost 23 years now. And in so being, um, I have learned that food is really the key to your health, bar, barring almost anything except what you have around you. Um, it's called epigenetics. And food does affect how you feel, how you look, how you perform. And as a certified nutritionist, I've worked with everybody from little bitty kids in pre-kindergarten, and they do have great taste buds, to corporate executives and uh, organizations like um, the United Healthcare and the American Diabetes Association, as well as private clients. I love teaching people about how food really has an effect on their whole being, and I've been working in in New York. I've worked here. I'm in Houston now, and I've spent 15 years in Colorado working with a lot of different people and athletes as well up there. And I love to ride a bike, so I've, I've worked out my own nutritional needs for that. And everybody's different. That's something that I've learned. But all of us do have to eat, so I decided that food was it for me and for I love feeding the world. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I hope that helps. Yes, absolutely. And Ricky, I know you're going to be whipping up something special today. Yes. I just wanted to share that uh, I really never was cognizant of the relationship between what I was putting in my body and the health issues that I have. Oh. And now I'm much more aware of it. And I've I really am very conscientious about what I'm eating and I gave up sugar. I gave up caffeine. And uh, recently I started on sugar about a week ago and I just decided to stop this morning because normally I, I was what now happened? eating donut. <laughs> what am I doing? Eating oh, donuts? What so that you made that just that choice. Well, I was in the grocery store shopping for my mother, actually, and she loves sweets. And so it, it wouldn't even bother me because I had stopped eating sugar. But then I saw an a totally processed. They were, I'm not going to say the brand, but I saw these devil's food fudge donuts. And I thought, oh, I really, I was, I actually, as I was reaching for them, I'm like, no, don't do it because you know you're going to eat them. <laughs> <laughs> but it's amazing because at the same point in time, I really was kind of feeling sluggish after I started eating it. So today I'm sugar free again. I, I, I don't want to go back. There was just a week digression, but a week too long. Interesting that you mentioned that because um, just yesterday I got a, a messenger, um, a message, whatever, YouTube messenger a text from a friend of mine who was asking about um, allergies to wheat and to dairy, particularly wheat and gluten. And that's one of the things that I have been working to specialize in because there's so much of that now. 
And wheat is one of those sneaky things that manufacturers were put into something and it's like way down on the list of ingredients, but it's used as a filler. And for people who have wheat allergies or are celiac or even sensitive to a little bit of gluten, it can be disastrous. So this is something that I, she's, she's got me interested in doing some more classes on that. And uh, because, because it's so prevalent, because some of the foods are so adulterated, our food industry, and if anybody in the food industry is listening, please listen up. There's too much adulteration and there's too much concentration on profit, profit and not people as far as the food that's being manufactured and raised. And so put me on my soapbox for that because I truly believe it. We are having epidemics of problems because people are not eating good food. And it's promoted, you know, in the supermarkets. If I, I stand every once in a while and I watch supermarket baskets and what people have in them, and I have to go like this because if I open my mouth, the supermarket will kill me. <laughs> We're going to find your picture in the post office. <laughs> yes. Not, not allowed in grocery stores anymore. <laughs> no, not allowed in big chains or the smaller ones are okay most of the time. But oh my gosh. I mean, there's such a plethora of garbage out there. You know, it's funny because I'm sorry. I was going to say, I actually find myself looking at what people are buying, like the person in front of me. And I think, oh, I guess they're really healthy or I guess they don't, you know, I don't, I'm not making judgment, but you, you can make some, <laughs> yes, some assessment by what you see. I think it's called discernment yeah. rather than judgment, because if you care at all about your own health and your family's health, then you discern what's best for them. And okay, go have some, you know, you can have a, a yesterday, two days ago, uh, one of my clients offered me chocolate covered almonds, dark chocolate, no sugar and almonds. And they were absolutely delicious. Now, I think they used a little stevia in the dark chocolate, but really, I mean, you can find all sorts of goodies to satisfy those needs, especially for something like chocolate and comfort foods. And actually what we're making today is kind of a comfort food because um, we're stuffing, we're actually using panko breadcrumbs and something I don't often use. And instead of breadcrumbs, I could have used um, almond flour or uh the, let's see, chopped up nuts, which we're going to use anyway. But there's always a way to substitute something for the other thing that affects your digestive system in a bad way. So that's really where I specialize. And so we're going to be off on a journey today because I discovered something. Um, I'm, we're going to do stuffed zucchini. Da -da. I'm two-handed zucchinis. And... <laughs> And then we're going to stuff a chicken breast and cook that, which is, it cooks very quickly because we're going to roast our um, zucchinis. And while the zucchinis are roasting, we are going to stuff the chicken and pan, pan saute that. So it's really it, two interesting things, one meat, one vegetarian that work beautifully together. And they are, this is a form for me, it's a form of comfort food. So very exciting well i'm looking forward to that and i know you're going to talk about spices as well so i'm going to spotlight you and looking forward to what you're whipping up well thank you and again good morning afternoon evening everybody wherever you are and today we're making stuffed zucchini and we're stuffing them with a combination of chopped nuts um, I'm using Bulgarian feta cheese instead of Greek feta. You could use Greek if you like, but I happen to like the flavor of Bulgarian feta cheese. And if you have the chance to go to a deli that carries a bunch of different things and they have different uh, cheeses, try tasting it. It is dairy, but this this is um, it's our, our way of doing comfort food today. And we've also got um, crumbled wall, uh, chopped walnuts and an egg and dill, which is something that people don't always use. So the first thing we do is I boiled the zucchinis whole for about three minutes, just to kind of parboil them. And then when you take them out, before you slice a piece off, which we will do, and also we're gonna scoop out the insides, as soon as I get my favorite scooper, 
in this case, since it's small, it happens to be a grapefruit spoon. Handy tool. So put them on a level surface, like on, on a flat table or on your, your pan, if you're going to put them in there, and find the most level spot so that they'll sit up when you put them in the pan. Then up on the opposite side, which is this side for this one, slice off a thin slice with a very sharp knife so that you get a nice clean cut on both of them. And by the way, you start with fat zucchini so you can stuff them. So we have room to stuff them. And we're going to hold on to these because we're going to use those later. In the meantime, I'm going to score. I'm going to cut this one just a little bit more. Open it up a little bit more. And I'm going to score, which means crisscross lines on the zucchini so that I can get the insides out faster. I'm going to go across and back. But be careful when you do this not to pierce the skin. You do not want to pierce the skin on these. And then cut along the side about mm, an eighth of an inch from the edge of what you've cut. And we're going to chop out the insides in a second. Here we go. And we're going to put everything in this handy dandy little bowl that I have here. All the filling. And I think you can see how nicely that comes out when you do that. Actually, I'm going to chop it up a little bit more once I get it out. But as I say, be careful not to pierce the skin so you have to get down far enough but not too far and the grapefruit knife is great because it does pull the things out easily i'm going to turn that around a little put the juice into the bowl i'm back here and get the rest of that out and while your oven is heating up to 375 and you have a pan on your range. I'm going to put a couple of tablespoons of olive oil in there. Here's my boat. You can see that. It's pretty well cleaned out, but I didn't pierce the skin. So we're going to do the other one as well. And keeping in mind that these have to go into the oven, and come out, they come out solidly. And then you can serve them. Uh, I served them yesterday with just a beautiful salad. Or you can just serve them by themselves because they're pretty filling, especially with the stuffing. And as I say, they're kind of a vegetarian comfort food for me. And if you don't get all the way down, you can always saw it with the grapefruit spoon. There we go, very carefully, so I'm not breaking the skin. That's really important, by the way. And you can use the grapefruit scoop, uh, spoons for things like um, hollowing out um, butternut squash or any kind of squash where you want the skin to stay intact and you're going to stuff the thing. So here we go. There we go. Yay. And you can leave a little more at the ends so that it holds up solidly. There we go. Okay, so I have my hollowed out zucchini boats, as I call them. Here we go. And I'm going to chop up the flesh a little bit more just to make sure that it fits in the little zucchini boats well. Nice looking boats. Yeah, no oars though. <laughs> Actually, you could use toothpicks and play oars, but if you've got kids and they want to help you, you can, of course, you know, play with the boat idea. But we're not going to float them. We're actually going to make them. So there we go. I want this small, almost minced, and we're going to put that in the bowl. Now, actually, I'm not going to put it in the bowl. I take that back. 
Okay, and the next thing I'm going to chop up to go with it was my onion. Hello. Hello. There it is. You take about half an onion, and this is a fairly large onion, so I'm going to cut that in half and do my onion. This you want chopped finely to go with the zucchini flesh. So I'm going to cut that up. And then carefully chop it as small as I can without getting any pieces of finger or knuckle or any other flesh in there except the zucchini flesh. There we go. I'm going to mix that all together. Yeah, we'll just give that an extra chop through so we can make sure that it's nice and fine. So I have about the same amount of onion as I do zucchini chopped up zucchini flesh and I'm going to take my egg oh I don't want any pieces of shell there we go excuse me and we're going to whip that up I'm going to use my spoon because it's here you can do lots of things with a serrated egg spoon so I've got my beaten egg. And right now, I'm going to let that sit for a second. And I'm going to take my little skillet, which has been heating, and with olive oil. And I'm sure you can hear that. And I'm putting in... Let's get to the other camera. All right, here we go, technology. There, no, we don't. <laughs> Wrong camera, sorry. Oh, we'll get this yet. And let's see. Yes. So you can see I've got need a little bit more olive oil, but not a lot because the zucchini was pretty juicy. So we're going to saute this on medium high until the onions start to brown. So we're sauteing the zucchini flesh and the onions, and I'm going to put a little salt and pepper in there. Just basic. As much as you like, I happen to like things a little on the salty side. There we go. And we're starting to heat up. I don't know if you can hear it's beginning to sizzle, which is yes. a, lo a lovely sound to my ears, frankly. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is chop up some garlic. You can use a garlic press or you can just do it by hand to mince your garlic. And guess where that goes? Right in with the onions and the flesh. So we'll just chop that up a little more. It's funny, I have a garlic press that I, I do use occasionally, but I just have this thing about chopping it up. Okay. Calls for one large garlic clove, and that's what we have here. Very carefully on my knife. You can see it. There we go. And I like to mix things as I put them in. So, of course, I'm going to mix that around a little bit more. And that will start to get fragrant along with the onion. And the flesh. You can see that it's kind of juicy at this point. But it will start to reduce a wee bit and... We want some of the juice. We'll have the juice of the both the flesh and the onions, but we'll also have the egg mixed in there shortly. Okay, I'm going to turn the heat down a little because it's doing a little more simmer than I want it to. And depending on your range, of course, you have to watch it. So, there we go. Now, in the meantime, what I'm going to mix in with my egg, as soon as I get back here, 
I'm going to mix up. Usually takes about five minutes for that to work. So in the meantime, I'm going to mix up the cheese. I've got a quarter cup of that Bulgarian feta, or you can use Greek feta, whichever you prefer. It's interesting, the difference in the flavors in the feta cheeses. Um, as I say, try them. Try, you know, buy a little bit of each and try a different flavor each time until you find one that you really like or two. And we're also going to add a quarter cup of chopped walnuts. And walnuts are one of the better nuts for grain food. I'm just going to chop it roughly. And this is not an official um, nut chopper. It's actually a wonderful tool for in the kitchen for chopping and for beating things. So I'm using it right now to chop my walnuts up a little finer. And you can get the walnuts in pieces or the whole walnuts and have at it. If you put them into a blender or a food processor, they're going to become more like a powder, of course, which you probably knew, but I just have to say that. And I think they, judging from the way they've come out before in this recipe, I like a little bit of crunch. And keeping an eye on my onions and zucchini flesh. I'm going to give that a little swirl around in a second. There we go. So I've roughly chopped up the walnuts to where I can put them in with my egg and cheese. Obviously, this is not a vegan or wheat-free recipe, but there we go. Give that a swirl. And I've got my breadcrumbs, but first I'm going to go check on the onions. Yep, there we go. And I'm going to add my breadcrumbs. These are panko breadcrumbs. And I'm adding, you always add your dry into your wet ingredients. And I think you can see that it's becoming thicker. Yes, we can. Hmm? Yes, we can see that. Okay, good. I'm going to try to break up the cheese a little bit more. You, even when you get the crumble, there's always some big pieces. And in this particular recipe, you want to crumble up a little bit more. And I got one big chunk of zucchini in there. Okay. Leave it more. And actually, I did cut this recipe in half. Same as last week when we cut the other recipe in half, or two weeks ago, I think. Um... Because it actually calls for four zucchini, but we're working with two. However, I like to use almost the same amount of spices and herbs just because of the flavor. And now, to give it a little more pizzazz, I'm going to chop up some dill. I'm going to let that sit for a second and take my favorite knife and chop up some fresh dill. When you buy the... Um, packages of herbs in the grocery store always remember to rinse them first and dry them off usually I dry mine with paper towels so that you just make sure that any kind of residue or um, dust or anything like that is off of them and this calls for the whole recipe calls for a teaspoon of fresh dill if you have dry dill, add a little bit more. And you can see that it's very easy to chop with a sharp knife. And sharp knives matter. And so we're going to make sure we get all the little pieces of dill in there. We are just about have a teaspoon here. I think we'll just use this. There we go. And I'm going to carefully using the back of my knife because I'm working on a wooden surface and I don't want to get wood in there. Get as much of it up as I can. And let's mix that up. 
You can put the dill in sooner if you like. And we're going to take all of this. We've got the breadcrumbs, the eggs, the dill, and the salt and pepper is already in there. And let's see. Oh, let me switch the camera. See if I can get it right this time. <laughs> we're almost there. And if the mixture seems a little bit too dry to you, wait until you get everything mixed in with the onions and the flesh from the zucchini. There we go. And make sure you get everything mixed thoroughly. You can see there's a little bit of scraping off the bottom, which is fine. And if it's really, really dry, you can always add a few drops of water or more olive oil or even a teeny bit, a teaspoon to a tablespoon of white wine would work in here. So you have options. But you want your stuffing. And by the way, when I end up with, <laughs> you want your stuffing to be edible um, all by itself. So if you're used to stuffing a turkey or uh, you know a bird or something like that, and you have the stuffing that you cook on the side or in a separate pan from the bird, this is a similar kind of thing. You can do that with this too. Actually, I had too much stuffing for the, the boats we had. I'm gonna add just a teeny bit of olive oil here. And so I took the leftover stuffing and I put it back in this pan and made it into a patty and it was really good <laughs> so I, I cheated and had a stuffing patty next to my zucchini boat so there we go and we're going to let it turn it off now and i'll bring it back along with the pan i've got a comment from karen Hello, nice, karen. nice music as we watch the cooking show and yummy ingredients <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Can you? I didn't know if you could really hear the music, but I guess you can. Okay, well, here's my pan. I've lined it with foil because it makes life a little bit easier for the cleanup. And what I'm going to do also is take a teeny drop of olive oil and put it under each, each of the zucchini boats and spread it around. And yes, I did wash my hands. There we go. Just so I don't want it to stick. It usually doesn't, but I just want to make sure. And it won't affect the cooking other than keeping the, the zucchini from sticking to the pan. Okay, so we've heated the oven up to 375. And we're going to stuff these. Oh, does this smell good? Stuff these goodies. It sure does. <laughs> I wish you could have some of this. Me too. Even with the wheat, the panko breadcrumbs. I found that I don't use breadcrumbs very often. However, I've been using panko breadcrumbs for almost six months now, working with some uh, special clients. And I find that they're really great. They work beautifully rather than regular breadcrumbs. And yesterday... I didn't have the panko, so what I did was I took two pieces of gluten-free bread and I toasted them, quite toasted, and then I took them and broke them up and put them in a food processor and made breadcrumbs with those. So you can do this so that it would be gluten-free. So instead of the panko, you could use a gluten-free bread or you can get gluten-free breadcrumbs. I like to make my own because I don't use them that often, so I like to make them fresh. So here we are stuffing our boats. We're going to have a lot of stuffing left, I think. And that is hot. Let's get the other guy going. And I'm going to spread them apart a little bit so I can just pack the stuffing in there. 
There we go. I feel like I have two kayaks here or canoes. <laughs> I'm feeling cold. <laughs> We just need many people to be in here and row them in there. And any other questions? No, not so far. Anybody out there have any questions for Chef Ricky? Because we've got garlic in here and we've got dill. So it's kind of a, a gentle flavoring to go with the zucchini. And I could add um, maybe a teeny drop of something like cumin which I'm not sure would go well with the dill. So maybe I'll use something more like paprika and give it a little more color because I'll show you how pretty they are in a minute. And we could add some color to them. They will brown. However, when you first put them in the oven to bake, it's recommended that you cover them with a piece of aluminum foil so that they don't it doesn't burn the stuffing to begin with. Got a little overage here. And as you can see, I've got some more here. So when it cools down a little bit, I'll make a patty out of it. Meantime, Those of you who are out there watching, we'd love to say hello if you want to type your name in. Yeah, yeah. that looks great. You know I'm going to put a little bit more in the first one. It's just a little too flat. Oh, I want my stuffing to puff up. This is a hearty meal, believe it or not, even though it's zucchini, especially for vegetarians, this is really yummy. I'm gonna be careful not to pierce the foil. There we go. We'll have a smaller patty, but we'll have a well-stuffed zucchini. And if you like, you can sprinkle a little more of the feta on top once it gets going, I will probably do that when I remove the aluminum foil because we need to bake now. I'm just going to take a little bit of paprika. Excuse me. And give it a teeny sprinkle. Oops. And if you don't have a top with holes on the jar, put it in the top and sprinkle from there. It's a lot easier than trying to control what comes out of the jar all at once. Okay, so we'll bring this up. Actually, let me put it on the other camera because I think that's easier to see it. We do have a comment from Sherry Redgrave. Sherry from Oregon says she grinds up, gluten, I guess, gluten-free pretzels for breadcrumbs. Very nice. Yeah, beautiful, that's Ricky. That's a great idea, Sherry. And thank you for being here. Thank you, Sherry. And I will tell you some more about Sherry while we're talking about spices and things to use in your foods. Now we're, excuse me, I'm going to put that in the oven for about, let me see for sure, 30 minutes. Okay. And what I want to show you in the meantime, hi again. Hello. <laughs> I'm going to take my stuffing and put it into a, you can actually do it almost like this and just do it like a sloppy joe. I'm going to put it together and make a patty. Might need to add a little bit more liquid. Okay. Well, I'll just leave that for now. What I did want to tell you about Miss Sherry from Oregon is that she has created something that I, I think I mentioned that to you, Dr. Jacqueline. She's created a, she invented, put together something she calls Sherry's Hazel Cream. And it's hazelnut milk and hazelnut cream. And here's her package. Oh, I like it. You can see, yeah. And there she is in cartoon, of course. And here's the way it comes. It comes in this wonderful little packet that's sealed and it's a paste of pure hazelnut and a couple of in, in other ingredients. It has about five, six ingredients. And it's just absolutely fabulous what you do with it. I took the, you take the, the paste and you put it into a blender 
and you fill the blender up to the 32 ounce mark or 30 ounces, however, if you want it a little thicker and you blend it for about a minute and you've got a bottle of milk. It's fabulous. I made muffins with it and I made a few other things with it using that, including putting it in my tea and my coffee. And it's absolutely fabulous. And you can go to her website. It's sherryshazelcream.com. It's C-H-E-R-I-H-A-Z-E-L-C-R-E-A-M.com. And she'll tell you all about it. So in the meantime, what we're going to do, since I'm into stuffing things, I have a chicken breast. And I'm going to take my... my other chopping board, which I use. For, I don't like to put the, the chicken or raw meat on my wooden top. So I use a silicone board. You can use any kind of board you like. And I'm gonna take one lovely little chicken breast that has been washed and kind of dried off. And I'm gonna slice it this way, down the middle. We have to stuff it, so we're going to make a pocket in the chicken breast. With And here's where, again, where a very sharp knife is very good to have. So we're going to butterfly it. You know, if you have shrimp, you cut them down the middle, and then you open them up. Well, we're doing the same thing with the chicken breast. So we'll cut that chicken breast open. And... Make sure you don't go all the way through. And of course, one side's gonna be a little thicker than the other, and I got one side really thicker than the other, but that's okay. Now, we were supposed to have fresh basil for this, and when I went out to my garden and I looked at the basil, I um, said, oops. So we're gonna stuff it with something else. And looking at spices and herbs and what you can use for chicken and turkey, Basil, of course, is one of the first that you can use. Bay leaf, chives, coriander, curry powder. And then you can use, of course, garlic. You can use garlic with almost everything. Marjoram, oregano, rosemary, sage, tarragon, and thyme. And since I happen to have some fresh thyme, we're going to, I don't think you can see that there. Fresh thyme, little baby thyme leaves, which I love. I'm going to take the leaves and I'm going to strip them, which is the easiest way to do this, into a bowl, taking, making sure that I don't get the stems in unless they're teeny tiny stems, but all I want are my thyme leaves. And we're going to create another stuffing. So we're going to use the goat cheese in place, well, you, the goat cheese, but in place of the basil leaves, which I really wish I had, but since I have the thyme, we're going to use thyme and a little bit of the dill. And we're going to take what I sliced off the zucchini and make a stuffing. So we're going to take that. This is what happens when you think your company's coming in an hour and you realize that you don't have the basil that you thought you had. So now you're going to use something else and it'll be just as good or maybe even better. You never know. It's intuitive cooking. And my philosophy is if it smells good, it'll probably taste good together. So any comments on that one? I know if Karen's watching, she's done things like this. And I'm sure Sherry has. So I'm just curious. No comment yet. No comments yet. Okay, well, it must be we're on a roll here. Okay, so the time is a little tedious but we're gonna get it all off very carefully. And you go from the top, you have to hang on to the top carefully of a stem and just bring your fingers down gently and it'll take, it'll strip the leaves off. Oop. And whatever doesn't get stripped off is gonna get chopped up, so we'll see. There we go. Any comments? I know Dr. Jacqueline, um, you said you like herbs. Yes, I do. Do you have any favorites as far as eat, cooking with chicken? Or actually, these the herbs are also good with Cornish hens. Those little guys? Yeah. What about rosemary? Absolutely. Yep. Rosemary is wonderful. And rosemary goes wonderfully. I did a, um, 
rosemary um, fennel pork roast the other day that turned out absolutely marvelous. It was very hard to resist when it came out of the oven because I was cooking for someone else. But uh, yeah, rosemary is another one of my favorites. And it's a very hearty herb in the, in the uh, garden as well. I find that the rosemary gets through the, the changes in temperatures that we have here in Houston. It lives pretty well. So there we go. That should do us one little stem in there. Okay. I'm going to take that on the edge here and chop that up a little bit more. So I've got my chicken breast waiting and I'm going to put a little salt and pepper on it. Because salt is something that brings the flavors out in different foods. And I'm really, you don't need tons of it, you just need enough. And you get to judge what's enough when you're doing it. And I'm going to take my goat cheese and cut some pieces off and put them into this little dish so we can mush everything up together. Oops, technical term, mush. Except you're supposed to get it in the bowl. There we go. Okay. And if you have any allergies to dairy, you can use um, the dairy-free cheeses. There should be a goat cheese that's, or a, a type of goat cheese. And actually goat cheese is easier for most people who have sensitivities to dairy. It's much easier for them to digest in many cases. I've had a lot of clients who could eat goat cheese and goat's milk if they couldn't drink cow's milk. And it has to do with the enzymes and the difference in the animals. I'm gonna get a fork, excuse me. And mash that together. That's the goat cheese and the thyme. And we're gonna add a little more juice here in a second. And I'm going to chop up the zucchini slices. To go in there as well. Let's get these guys going. You just want to chop it up and dice it fairly fine to mix in with the cheese. If we were using the basil, the way you would stuff it would be with the basil leaves and just stuff literally stuff the leaves in there and we'll wrap up the chicken breast with a toothpick or two so it stays together or you could even do it open face like we did with the zucchini so we're chopping up the zucchini to go in there it's going to make a lot of stuffing we may have an overage here too but then it's always good to munch these things and you can always take your stuffing with the goat cheese and toast a piece of your favorite gluten-free bread and put that on as a spread. There's always something you can do with food. I'm a big believer in inventing. And we're gonna get a little more juice going in here. Can you see that? The mixture's coming together? Yes. And I have to tell you, this was Dr. Jacqueline's idea. When I told her that I was out of bay leaves, or out of basil leaves, she said, why don't you use the zucchini slices? And it was like, the light bulb went on. Thank you. That's what I'm here for, and to remind people about your book. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> I get so into the cooking, I forget I actually wrote a book. <laughs> and it is about cooking it's about food it's got some food history and it is um on amazon it's an ebook and if you go into amazon you can see it behind me if i move over it's called yes you can eat well and eat right which means eat right for your type eat right for your family eat right for keeping yourself not only alive but thriving and you can eat right to prevent disease and to reverse disease. So 
There's a lot of eat rights in there. And it's a lot of fun. It's got some fun pictures. And Congratulations, Ricky. Thank you. Yeah, it will be. It, it was published as of May 6th. I believe. March, March, March 6th. March 4th, I think, is what it has. Was it to March 4th? I thought it was March 5th. Let me look it up again. Okay. It was in the first week of March. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> Thank you. You can tell we uh, rehearsed this so well. <laughs> no That's rehearsal like. here. No, no, it's just authentic. All right, let's. This is live. And Publication really date is March 4th, 2022. Yahoo. I like that. That's very interesting because working with my mentor, Mary Morrissey, one of her, um, and I don't know where she got this, it may have been adapted from somebody else, but one of the things that she talks about is marching forth, go forth and do good. <laughs> So I love that. I love that saying. Now, we have a well-stuffed little breast that I am not going to be able to fold in half. However, I can get it partway there. And this is going to be very interesting. Okay. Let me just get my hands a little unsticky. And we'll continue with that. because it would be a good idea to cook it before you eat it. So what I'm gonna do is cover my zucchini that I forgot to put the aluminum foil on. There we go. It's browning nicely. And Chef Ricky, the producer in me has to tell you we have about five minutes. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll have to look at um, the finished product because unfortunately before I could catch a certain person yesterday's saved zucchini that was stuffed was eaten. Uh, who would that have been? <laughs> that would have been the hand. And what I'm going to do now, you can do this with, I'm going to take a couple of toothpicks and in our five minutes, I'll show you how to put this together. I've got some olive oil heating in a pan. And I'm going to take a couple of not colored toothpicks. Okay, we'll use a pink one. And kind of bring the flesh together here. It's You're like a seamstress. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you sew? I do. Yes, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Sometimes it's the butts of birds when I'm cooking them. And now <laughs> it's, it's the, uh, there we go. Okay, so we have this beautifully stuffed. Oh, it looks gorgeous. Pussy. And I'm gonna let the oil heat just a tad more. Yep, there we go. Messy hands, as somebody I know said. Okay, I'm gonna switch to over there so you can see what we're doing. And then I know we'll have to go. Okay. You get a lot of exercise during this show, don't you? <laughs> Back and forth. Okay. Can everybody see that? Yes. You see the olive oil in there. And actually, I might put a teeny bit more salt on it. And I'm going to use my kosher salt because I love that. Let me put a pinch. So we've got the goat cheese with chopped up thyme. And I'm going to turn it down a little bit. And basically what you do is brown this lovely little thing. And yes, the goat cheese will get soft. And it takes probably about 15, 20 minutes for that to complete. And it's so pretty when it's done. So Do you I'm have to put a lid on it or something so it gets brown on the top part of it? Yeah, I'm going to put a spider screen on it. 
just about enough room for the Spanish tree. You could put a lid on it, but I like I've turned it down. I'd rather cook it a little bit longer on a lower heat and let it get thoroughly cooked because you know you want chicken to cook thoroughly. So I'm just going to be putting the spatter screen on it for now. And I'll give you a little look at what's in the oven. Um, I can take them out and show you. We've got about 12 minutes left. But I want you to see how pretty they've gotten. Ooh. You can see they're starting to brown a little bit. Yep, that's good. And uh, so I will send out the recipe. You will have that. And if there are no more questions, um, we can do some herbs and spices next time. But have fun with whatever you're doing. And as I said. If you run out of basil, you, you substitute something else that has as much flavor, add a little bit more of the spices that you like, and you create a masterpiece. So thank you so much. Voila. Thank you, yeah. Chef Ricky. That was fabulous. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay. And hello to Sherry. I also uh, posted Sherry's website. Oh, great. Thank Sherry's you. And you can, yeah, you can reach me at rickyskitchen.net. That's R I C K I S K I T C H E N dot net or Ricky at Ricky McKenna dot com. So please reach out to me if you have any questions about the herbs, the spices, or about anything that's, you know, the gluten free. If you can, I am going to put the classes together to, to help people substituting the gluten free things for those that, that they can't eat. But they'll be just as delicious or even better. So All please right. get in touch with me and we'll see how that works. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chef Ricky. Another brilliant show. I appreciate it. All right, folks. Thank you so much. For those of you who are watching on YouTube, it would be great if you would just click that little subscribe button. We'd love to have you as part of USA Global TV family. We have three more shows coming up. So in just over seven minutes is The Listening Mentor. And my guest will be Caroline Heward. So please stay wherever you are watching us. I'm going to run over to the other studio and I look forward to seeing you there. If you'd like to be a guest on any of our shows, please go to our website, usaglobaltv.com. Book your session. Goodbye for now. Bye, Ricky. Thank <laughs> you.